We've already touched on that. Why is that? Blacks have more high, high blood pressure, more diabetes, more high cholesterol. And so it's kind of like beating a dead horse and I'm saying the same things over, but you see how all these things tie together. People just don't realize how it ties together. Okay. So the other thing that's stunning to me is that blacks are more likely to die following a stroke. I think that's because what the young lady in the back said, we don't go in. Something's wrong, we can't walk, our legs not working, our face is drooping, we still stay home. The doctors can't help me. I'm not going to the emergency room. Mm -mm. Sleep it off. You said sleep it off. Exactly. I'm, I have patients that tell me that. Sleep it off. One of my patients was delivering her baby. She had twins. Her mom was somewhere. I can't remember where she was, but having all these symptoms, and she didn't want to go to the emergency room. Her mom's a diabetic, had high blood pressure, kidney disease, and she was feeling drooping and, and par paralysis of one side of her body, and she still did not want to go into the emergency room. I understand her daughter's having twins, but still, you want to be around to enjoy those twins. You need to get to the emergency room. Sorry, there's a question. Some of this has to do with our case. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, uh, when, uh, uh, when we had a lot of prejudice, segregation, and uh, racism, even more so, even though we continue to have racism, it's not to the magnitude as it was yes. in the past, and thank God for exactly. those improvements. Uh, but it has to do with trust, because of the way people were treated in the past. Yeah, people were given diseases and when were they went to the... that they had passed on from generation to generation. Right. Uh, it has to do with a lot of times African Americans don't have medical coverage and don't have the money to go to the doctor. So a lot of times, too many of us, we don't go until there's something wrong. Right. And, and that's it what it's too late. That you had some type of a sickness or whatever that's been going on in your body five, ten years. Exactly. And when something is wrong, it's at the last stages. Well, and that's, we're gonna get into talking about pregnancy too, but that's that's very a very good statement in that a lot of people don't go until something's wrong. Um, and even with our pregnant girls, and I'll, I'll get into that, why there are some disparities and why there's problems, but pregnant women, especially African-American pregnant women, don't go to the doctor till they're pregnant. And so they have diabetes already, they have high blood pressure already, but has never been diagnosed because they don't go to the doctor. So then when they are pregnant, it affects their pregnancy significantly. And so we'll get into that a little bit too, but not only with pregnancy, you know, that's what I do, but with, with other things, older women, their foot could be falling off and they still don't want to go to the doctor. They have a big ulcer on their foot from pressure ulcer from being diabetic and having no feeling in their feet um, because they, they don't want to pay or they, don't, they can't afford it. Right. Healthcare is expensive. And when you go to the doctor, they want to do 20 tests that cost even more money. And then they want to put you on this medication that costs even more money. And you know, I don't want to take a medication every day, right? And so, I understand, but it's a, the education part is important because a lot of these things are preventable. So we, again, that was like beating a dead horse. The risk factors are the same. So again, with kidney disease, um, African Americans are three and a half times more likely to develop kidney disease than whites. And again, you see what the risk factors are, and you, so you can see why that number is so high, because we're the ones with high blood pressure and diabetes, which leads to kidney disease. So these are just some of the signs, a little break from all the words. Some of the signs of diabetes, symptoms of diabetes, always tired, frequent urination, always hungry, sexual problems, weight loss, weight gain, um, wounds, so ulcers that won't go away, that won't heal, 
Um, for females, vaginal infections, very common. I, I get women that are diabetic who can't get their diabetes under control. I don't manage diabetes, but I manage the vaginal infections, so I have to work closely with the other doctors to get the, the sugars under control. The, the bacteria, the fungus, it likes to harbor where it's sweet. And sorry, it's kind of graphic, but moist and, and dark. So it likes to stay in there, especially if your sugars are three, 400, then you're gonna stay with an infection. That's where the bacteria likes to be. Um, numbness or tingling in the feet and hands, that's because the nerves are affected by the diabetes and it eats away at the nerves. And so you have that, that neuropathy. You probably heard your doctor say that. Basically, the nerves are being affected. Um, you're always thirsty and you have blurry vision. So it can affect the eyes as well, the blood vessels in the eyes. Diabetes affects every single part of your body, every part. Women with diabetes are more likely to have heart attacks, again, the strokes, um, the neuropathy, peripheral, which means your distant um, vascular system, so your distant blood vessels are more likely to be affected. Um, and so that's why a lot of women have problems with the sores that won't heal, with the neuropathy. A lot of women, or, and men with diabetes will step on an attack and not even know it because they, their feet are so numb. And then they end up with the sore. That's why the, their doctor tells you to go get your feet checked out once a year. I don't know if anyone in this room is diabetic, but understanding why these things are important. I think a lot of doctors just tell you to do it, but they don't tell you why it's important. But you just do it and say, or you don't do it and say, well, I don't know why he's telling me to do that anyways, right? So anyway, so this is another slide just reiterating what we've talked about. HIV and AIDS, another big one, another big one. Um, black women are 18 times more likely to be diagnosed with HIV than white women. I mean, that's just a staggering number. It's just a staggering number, it really is. Um, sexual practices, getting tested. I know there's a lot of uh, awareness and clinics in the community that are doing free HIV tests. I mean, this is all within the last 10, 15 years, though, that it's really gotten big like this. Um, even despite of all that, in spite of all that, we're still seeing high numbers of African American women diagnosed with HIV and AIDS. It's just unacceptable. And it starts with us right here in this room. We have to get the word out and let these, it starts with me. I have to let these young ladies know, use condoms. It is not worth your life to not use a condom or to say no. A lot of young girls don't want to say no because they want someone to love them or this and that. I mean, I, I see it all. So just, I really wanted you guys to see that number. So now we're gonna get into the birth health disparities and really this all ties together. Does anyone have any questions first? I'm sorry. Okay. It all ties together and we kind of touched on it already, but I'm gonna start with the statement that infants born to black women are 1.5 to three times more likely to die than those born to women of other races and ethnicities. Again, staggering numbers. There's a, a, a chart that'll show you kind of the, the, the trend for that. Um, and it's because of all the things that we just talked about. If we're more likely to have high blood pressure, if we're more likely to have diabetes, we're more likely to die ourselves, then what makes that any different for when we're birthing our children, right? So we're, my pregnant women are more likely to have high blood pressure, which can affect your pregnancy. If your blood pressure is consistently high, the blood flow to your baby is not as it should be. So your baby is having a hard time surviving in the womb because the blood pressure is off. And I'm trying not to get too, I don't wanna to use too much medical jargon, but basically, if, if you think about it, if your blood pressure high, then the pressure to the baby is off. There's resistance of the flow between you and your baby, okay? And so the placenta, which feeds the baby, is not healthy. Right? Because the, the placenta is a big blood vessel, okay? And if the blood pressure's off, 
between you and your baby, the placenta is not healthy and your baby's not healthy. So your baby, those babies don't grow. They have what we call IUGR, intrauterine growth retardation. They have preeclampsia, the moms have preeclampsia, which is dangerous for the mom. It's dangerous for the baby because it's dangerous for the mom. Have you all heard of preeclampsia? Yeah. Toxemia is what a lot of people call it. Um, basically, it's where you have high blood pressure and you're spilling protein. We don't have the exact mechanism as to why it causes such a, a drastic effect on the moms, but we know that it causes the blood vessels to not work correctly. There's a lot of resistance in the blood vessels. And so the moms get really, 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 really sick. Moms can die from preeclampsia. And the only treatment for preeclampsia is to deliver the baby. So if you think about that, if the mother gets preeclampsia at 24 weeks and she's deathly ill, what has to happen? We have to deliver the baby at 24 weeks. That baby has a very high chance of dying, one. If it does survive, it has a high chance of having some kind of morbidity, meaning some birth, some problem as the baby's growing up, okay? Ends up in the NICU. We won't even get into the financial part of it. The baby in the NICU for several months costs millions and millions of dollars. So again, it all started from the high blood pressure, the, from the kidney disease. Women who have kidney disease are seven times more likely to have preeclampsia than women who don't have kidney disease. And who's more likely to have kidney disease? We are. So if you can see health disparities in non-pregnant people trends over into health disparities in pregnant women as well. So the same thing with diabetes. And, and I'm not getting into all the things that high blood pressure can cause in pregnancy because there's a ton of other things as well that are, are scary. But preeclampsia is probably the most dangerous. Diabetes, the same thing. If you are a woman who's not taking care of your diabetes, which we talked about, you're not taking care of it because you're not going to the doctor because you can't afford it until you get on insurance, Medicaid. I'm not saying you in general. I'm, I'm saying not, not you all. I'm just saying you as a general term. But once you know you get on Medicaid, that's the first time you're getting care for any of these things. And so you come in with diabetes that's way out of control and you're trying to take care of a baby inside of you. Those sugar, those high sugars cause a lot of complications for pregnancy. Moms with diabetes have a higher risk of blood pressure issues and preeclampsia, but they also have a risk, increased risk of miscarriage because it's, it's just too much sugar. It's too much, and that's kind of the most basic way I can put it to you. The placenta does not develop right, the baby doesn't develop right, and it dies. So it's a miscarriage if it's before 20 weeks. Or you go along the pregnancy, the baby gets too large. Have you all heard that before? Macrosomic babies, so that macrosomic just means big old huge fat babies. People think that because the baby's fat that it's ready to come out. No, the fatness has nothing to do with the maturity of the baby, okay? So these babies are just big fat babies and when we do go to deliver them when they're at an a, at a age where they can be delivered, they end up getting stuck, which is gonna add to the mortality because if a baby gets stuck, say that head just delivers, the rest of the body doesn't come. That's an emergency, okay? It's a bad emergency. And so that's my job is to educate my patients on why it is important to control your diabetes during pregnancy. Or if they come to me before they get pregnant and they wanna get pregnant, why it's important to get the, have you all heard of a hemoglobin A1C? It's kind of what doctors use to measure how good or bad the, the sugars are during, you know, over three months. And so getting that number down to a level where it would be safe to have a baby. So if you all know anyone if, and who wants to get pregnant, you tell them, go see the doctor before you get pregnant so that you can be as healthy as possible before you get pregnant. 
so that your baby can survive and so that you can survive long enough to take care of a baby. What good is it for you to have a baby if you're not going to be here to see the baby grow up? There's a question. I just wanted to, uh, there's been in the news the last week a 15 pounder. Yes. 15 pounder. Do you know anything that that, that contributes, that, that their birth weight contributes to some of these? It's hard for me to know the details for sure, but likely. Sometimes it's not diagnosed. I have so many girls that come to me at 35 weeks, haven't had any prenatal care, so no one knows anything about the baby. They're just starting to, and they're gonna deliver in five weeks. We don't know if the patient has diabetes or not, so sometimes it happens like that. I, I, I don't know for sure what the, some, some people just make big babies, but they're able to get them out too. <laughs> I think if God's gonna have you, if you're a healthy woman and you just make a big baby, a lot of times people can get those out. It's the ones where we're not expecting it, or from the diabetes, where if you weren't diabetic, your baby would be a lot smaller type of deal, where we have a lot of complications. Does that make sense? It's just a theory, but, but anyway, so diabetes can lead to a lot of complications. Um, not only that, but we know that Babies born to moms with diabetes have a higher chance of high, having diabetes themselves down the line. Um, that may be due to the fact of why the mom has diabetes. This is selection, food selection, food, food choices, inactivity, all the things that we've already kind of went over. You kind of pass that down to your children. Um, so infant mortality, let me just tell you what that means. It's the death of a baby before his or her first birthday. So that's infant mortality. And then the mortality rate is an estimate of the numbers of infants, infant deaths for every thousand live births. So how many babies out of a, out of a thousand live births die, basically. So this is just showing you the trend. African Americans are the first one we have the highest uh, infant mortality rates, as you can see, of any, any other race. So the leading causes are birth defects, which birth defects can be caused by a, the two main things that I just told you. Diabetes can definitely cause birth defects, heart problems. I, I didn't even get into all the things that diabetes can cause in a pregnancy. So there's a whole host of things, okay? Like I said, heart defects, uh, kidney problems, um, babies are just too large, like we just talked about. Babies can have seizures after birth um, from the mom being poorly controlled diabetic. Uh, prematurity, which we talked about, remember that 24-week baby that we had to deliver because mom was preeclamptic and we needed to save her life. And so prematurity is one of the leading causes of death for babies. SIDS, which is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. We don't know exactly what causes it, but we, we think that it's due to, um, due to health issues. Health issues, um, they, they have been on a campaign, I know the March of Dimes and everything talks a lot about SIDS, but um, to make sure that we're putting the babies on their backs and not smothering the babies or not having a lot of blankets and toys in the, the crib with the babies and, just making sure it's a healthy environment, not smoking around the babies. Things as easy as that. Um, maternal complications, which we talked about, and injuries. Many of the causes of infant death can be prevented through good prenatal care. So making sure that you're going to your prenatal appointments, that you're asking questions, that's a huge deal. Your doctor doesn't know what you do at home. Your doctor can ask you the questionnaire question, but you have to be active too and, and ask, is it safe for me to do this? Is, you know, what should I do here? Or why should I take my vitamins? Come in to your doctor's appointments with questions. That's an important, important part of your visit. And that's why the doctor's there, is to answer your questions. Um, some things that you can do to prevent. So making sure you have a healthy diet, healthy weight, taking your vitamins, get a lot of women who won't take to their vitamins, I don't know why. A lot of times they say it makes them sick, so we have to try other ways to get the vitamins into them, but I, even without it making them sick, a lot of women just don't take their vitamins. 
I'm just not good with pills or, but it's important that you take your vitamins. And now the vitamins have DHA, which is good for your baby's brain development. Um, and we're always coming out with 